Today's lesson is called The Shocking Science Behind Static Electricity. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and again, we're going to continue talking about the science behind static electricity, and that science is shocking. It's probably something you didn't know before, and last time when we explained the reasons behind static electricity, you probably jumped out of your seat. Wow, I'm so shocked. I did not know that before. Now that we know this, however, how do we stop this nuisance? It's one thing to know how it works. It's another to stop it. I'm sure most of us don't particularly enjoy getting electric shocks from static electricity. I've got to make a confession here. I've never felt a shock due to static electricity. Sure, I've had my clothes cling to my body. Sure, I've had the whole hair stuck to balloon thing. Yes, yeah, someone has rubbed the balloon on my hair there and then picked it up only to have my hair stick to the balloon. But I've never felt a shock due to static electricity. I've never went, Ugh, zzz, that was static electricity. Oh, man, that hurt. That has never happened to me at all, except for once when I was almost struck by lightning. And yes, there I did feel a small shock. Why? Because if you look this up, lightning is actually caused by a similar phenomenon, albeit on a much, much greater scale. Okay, yes, lightning is a lot more powerful than a simple shock due to static electricity. Anyways, folks, let's go ahead and get started with the second part of our lesson on static electricity. Today, we'll be talking about how to avoid static electricity. Now that we know what causes static electricity, we can better shield ourselves from being shocked. One way is to pay attention to the material of the clothes we wear. Avoid wearing clothes that are made from insulators, such as wool or nylon, directly against your skin since these can cause static electricity to build up in your body. Cotton fabric is much better in this respect. As for shoes, pick ones with leather instead of rubber soles if you want to avoid sparks. Onlooker eyes from the intense light as the rocket took off. You could bring an umbrella to shield yourself from the midday sun. 你可以带把伞遮正中午的太阳。而 shield 除了可以当动词使用,还可以做名词,指防护物,盾。所以可以说, David used his quick wit as a shield against his co-workers' constant attempts at mockery. David 用他的机智避开同事不断的试图嘲弄。接着,我们看到一个名词,saw。指鞋底,脚底。像是, most athletic shoes have rubber soles. 多数的运动鞋有橡胶鞋底。另外, soul除了可以当名词, 也可以当形容词, 指唯一的。所以可以说, Bill is the sole survivor of a plane crash that killed 49 people. Bill是这场有49人罹难的空难中唯一的生还者。Okay, so let's talk about the first part of our lesson right now. It says, now that we know what causes static electricity, we can better shield ourselves from being shocked. Okay, so indeed we know what causes it. We know the science behind static electricity. We learned that in our last lesson. But, you know, how can we better protect ourselves from being shocked? We can better shield ourselves from being shocked. There are ways to stop this from happening. Uh, yes, here in Taiwan, I have not experienced many electric shocks from static electricity, although they do still exist. When I was growing up 
in the United States, Minnesota, Iowa, in that area.、Uh, it can be quite dry during the winter, and lots of people, of course, experience static electricity. So, if you've had this problem, we're going to try to talk about some ways to shield yourself from being shocked. So, here we've got the word "shield" being used as a verb that just means to protect you from something else, to stop it from getting to you.、Uh, you can shield yourself from attack. From an army by having a large shield, for example, that might shield you from attack. As I just said, their shield can be used as a noun too. A shield is something you hold to protect yourself, but here shield is being used as a verb to shield yourself from something else. So a shield noun shields you. Verb it keeps you. Safe. Anyways, let's go ahead and go to the beginning of this sentence. It started with the phrase "now that now that we know what causes static electricity." Blah blah blah. But what does this phrase "now that" mean? It means seeing as or considering. Yes, seeing as we now know what causes this, we can now shield ourselves. Now, anyways, let's go ahead and look at an example sentence for this phrase. You could say. Now that we're all here, we can start the meeting. Seeing that we're all here, we can go ahead and start the meeting. Anyways, now that we know what causes static electricity, we can shield ourselves from it. Now, one way to do this, one way is to pay attention to the material of the clothes we wear. Now, on day one, we talked about wool or nylon carpeting. Okay, apparently wool and nylon. Well, if you want to stay away from static electricity, you're going to want to stay away from these materials as well. So yes, avoid wearing clothes that are made from insulators such as wool or nylon. Avoid wearing them directly against your skin, since these can cause static electricity to build up in your body. Right. So those are some materials: wool or nylon. A wool, of course, comes from a Cheap, as we've said before, and wool sweaters can be very comfortable in the winter. It's probably not going to be a problem now because summer is almost here. So, indeed, don't wear wool, don't wear nylon if you have a problem with static electricity. And they will cause that static electricity to build up on your body or in your body. And next, it says cotton fabric is much better in this respect. So we've got different fabrics or different materials that are used to make clothing. What kind of fabrics do we have? We've got cotton, we've got wool, and then we've got artificial fabrics like polyester or nylon, etc., etc. Rayon, that's an artificial fabric. But cotton here, of course. Comes from those little white balls that they mostly grow in the American South. There, cotton, and it's much better in this regard or in this respect. So, in other words, if you wear a cotton T-shirt, you probably won't have much of a problem with static electricity. Yeah, if you wear wool or nylon clothes directly against your skin, you are putting yourself at risk for getting a shock. So, wear cotton instead. By the way, we also have this word. Fabric to talk about. Fabric is the material in this case from which clothes are made. And yeah, fabric before being made into stuff, it kind of looks like a big piece of cloth usually. Like if you go to a market, sometimes they'll have people who make clothes, and they'll have these large spindles, these large things full of big pieces of cloth, and that would be a big spindle or a big spool of. Fabric. Okay. Anyways, you could say something like this: The suit is made out of a fine fabric. And when we're talking about fine fabrics, we're talking about very, very nice fabric, like silk. Indeed, you can buy lots of fabrics at、uh, Di Hua Jie here in、uh, Taipei. I think there's a place that sells lots of fabric if you want to make clothing there. But in any case, yes, wearing cotton should help with this problem. Now, as for shoes, or when we consider shoes, pick ones or choose ones with leather instead of rubber soles if you want to avoid sparks. So here, sole, s o l e, sole. That simply is the bottom of your shoe. There you go. So if you want to walk across a carpet, a nylon or a wool carpet, let's say without 
picking up sparks or having some electrical activity going on around you, go ahead and opt for the leather instead of the rubber when it comes to the soles of your shoes, which actually reminds me of something. I do have a leather soled pair of shoes, but I don't wear them because they don't grip the ground very well. Whereas rubber shoes, they grip the ground really well. I wonder if electricity or something happening at the atomic level has something to do with the qualities of these fabrics, but I digress. Sometimes my mind does wander. Anyways, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll have more for you on static electricity right after this. Since static electricity occurs most often in dry, cold weather, you can prevent it by adding humidity to your environment. Get a humidifier for your home and, following expert advice, maintain a humidity level of 30% or above. By the same token, be sure to apply lotion to your skin. This minimizes friction between your skin and other surfaces that can cause static buildup. John decided to devote his life to minimizing the damage his mistakes had caused. John 决定将人生致力于尽量降低他犯的错所造成的伤害。另外，补充 minimize 的反义词 maximize, m a x i m i z e, maximize 指最大化。我们可以说 the company maximizes profits by keeping expenses in check. 公司借由控制支出来让利润达到最大。再来，我们看到一个单字 friction， 这个字为名词，指摩擦、摩擦力。像是 ，if you rub two sticks together to create friction， you might be able to start a fire。如果你摩擦两根棒子产生摩擦力，可能可以生火。接下来，我们看到名词 build up， 指累积、增加。例如。People are concerned about the buildup of industrial wastewater that's polluting the river. 人们对于会造成河川污染的工业废水增加量感到担忧。另外，补充 build up 的相关片语可以用 in the build up to 来表示在准备阶段，在铺陈过程中。所以可以说 ，in the build up to the election, there were lots of street demonstrations. 选前街头有许多游行活动。Okay, everybody. Let's continue with our lesson. This is the second part. So let's、uh, try to find out some other ways to prevent or to stop static electricity. Now, here it says, since static electricity occurs most often in dry, cold weather, you can prevent it by adding humidity to your environment. So, since because static electricity happens. In dry and cold weather, well, you can stop it if you have some humidity in your environment. So here in Taiwan, of course, it's quite humid most of the time. But during the winter, sometimes it can be relatively dry. So you might experience static electricity in the winter in different parts of Taiwan here. So if you're having a problem with that, you need to increase. The humidity in your environment. Humidity just simply refers to how much moisture is in the air. Right. The word humidity refers to the wetness of the air around us. Yeah. This term refers to the amount of water vapor in the air, roughly. Anyways, if you want to go ahead and get rid of the static electricity in your environment, think jungle. And not desert. Yes, jungles are usually places that are extremely wet as far as humidity is concerned. On the other hand, deserts are very dry places that might not be humid at all. Here's a good example sentence: In the desert, there is often very little humidity. Right, very low humidity in the desert, but of course here in Taiwan we're used to high humidity. That's why a lot of people from North America and Europe can't really get used to the weather in Taiwan because of the high humidity. But we all adjust eventually. Now, here's what you can do if you want to add humidity to your environment, or if you want to make things more humid. 
you can get a humidifier.、Uh, that is a device that actually adds humidity to the air. I had one when I was a kid because the air was quite dry where I grew up, especially in the winter. So yes, get a humidifier for your home. And following expert advice, maintain a humidity level of 30 percent or above. So I guess you need to have some kind of instrument there to measure the humidity in your house. 30 percent is a good level of humidity, according to the experts. Sounds about right to me. Now moving on, it says, by the same token, be sure to apply lotion. To your skin, okay. And we've got two things to talk about here. First of all, we've got this weird phrase at the beginning of the sentence. By the same token, what does this mean? Well, by the same token means in the same way. So here, something you're going to say is also true, just as what you previously said. Okay. So here earlier we said, okay, get a humidifier, and if you want to be comfortable as far as static electricity is concerned, okay, go ahead. Get that humidifier and make sure the humidity level is above 30 percent, and that will work. That will help you out. Now, what will also work? Well, by the same token, apply lotion to your skin. Okay, so in the same way as this will work, getting a humidifier, also applying lotion to your skin will work to make sure that you don't fall prey to static electricity. Now, before we move on, we also have this word lotion to talk about. A lotion is a liquid that you apply. To your skin, in order to moisturize your skin. That's the case here. There are other lotions that might help provide lubrication that might be used for medicine and stuff like that. But here we're talking about moisturizing your skin by using a lotion. For example, you could say, "Rub this lotion on your dry skin." It'll start to feel better immediately. Or、uh, when I was a kid, of course, we would rub suntan lotion on our skin before we went to the beach, so we wouldn't get sunburned. We called it suntan lotion back then. Nowadays, we call it sunscreen or sunscreen lotion. And if you apply that lotion to your skin, if you rub it on your skin, this minimizes friction between your skin and other surfaces. That can cause static buildup, so it minimizes or reduces that friction. Friction just means when things rub against each other. There can be friction between people as well. Hey, there's a lot of friction in the office. The、uh, coworkers are not getting along, but、uh, here it minimizes that friction. It reduces it between the skin and those other surfaces like wool or nylon, and those things can cause the buildup. Of static electricity, build up here just means accumulation or piling up of something. There you go. All right, folks. With that, it is time for us to take a break, but don't go away. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up our article on static electricity. If all else fails, an easy way to get rid of static electricity is to simply let it discharge from your body. To avoid a painful shock. Touch the object first with your knuckles or elbow, which are both less sensitive. Keep these tips and facts in mind so that you won't get zapped next winter. Finally, the third part, we see a word zap. This word is a verb used to describe electricity. For example, despite several attempts at zapping the patient, she failed to regain her heartbeat and passed away. 尽管有试图电击病人，该病人还是没有恢复心跳并去世了。This is our final paragraph, so let's talk about it. Okay, it says, "If all else fails, if nothing works, an easy way to get rid of static electricity is to simply let it." Discharge from your body. If you discharge electricity, you get rid of that electricity.、Uh, some devices require you to discharge the electricity from the battery before you can recharge it. I think a lot of batteries nowadays don't really have that requirement, but old batteries did. You had to get all the electricity out of them before you could recharge them. You had to discharge the electricity. There you go. Now to avoid a painful shock, touch the object first with your knuckles or elbow, which are both less sensitive. So you'll still get a shock, 
but you won't feel it. Yeah, the, your fingertips are very sensitive. There are all sorts of nerve endings there, but your knuckles, I should say, or your elbow, no problem. Not a lot of nerve endings. Even if you get shocked, it won't feel that bad. You won't feel the pain, so to speak. Anyways, knuckles. What are the knuckles? The knuckles are the bones at which the fingers join the hand. Okay, so where do your fingers and your hand come together? At the knuckles. Anyways, the boxer taped his knuckles because he didn't want to break bones in that part of his hands. Yes, very often boxers punch people for a living. They fight people for a living. So they're hitting people with their closed fists and with their knuckles. So they have to protect those parts of their hands. Indeed. Or I could say Tyrone got bloody knuckles after he punched the tree.、Uh, he was training for martial arts. So he punched the tree, but he got bloody knuckles as a result. You could also use your elbow,、uh, which is the part between your forearm and your upper arm. And these areas are less sensitive. So yes, you'll get that shock, but it won't hurt as much as it would if you touched it with your fingertips. That can be really painful. So keep these tips and facts in mind, so that you won't get zapped next winter. So remember these little bits of advice, and if you do, then you won't get zapped or shocked. Uh, the next time winter rolls around, we hope you can certainly remember this advice. Until then, that brings us to the end of our explanation. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. <music> 各位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天文法重点。课文一开始提到。Now that we know what causes static electricity, we can better shield ourselves from being shocked. 既然我们知道什么造成静电，就更能够防止自己被电到喽。这边要介绍的是 now that 加子句的用法。Now 在这边是当连接词，之后常常接 that 子句来表达既然怎么样，由于怎么样。那这个子句通常是对方已经知道的原因或是讯息。例如 ，Now that the show is over, let's go grab a bite. 既然表演结束了，那我们去吃点东西吧。好，那顺便帮同学补充两个意思相近的用法，一个是 seeing that 加子句，一种是 since 加子句。这两种都可以表达由于怎么样，既然怎么样。像课文第二部分的第一句，他有说到 ，since static electricity occurs most often in dry cold weather, you can 怎么样怎么样。他说，由于静电最常发生在干冷的天气，你可以怎么样怎么样。这个句子里面的 since 就是用来连接表示原因的子句，表示因为怎么样，由于怎么样，既然怎么样。好，那我们再来看 seeing that。加上子句也是表达类似语义，像是 There's no point in discussing this, seeing that you've already made your decision. 既然你都已经做好决定，那讨论这件事情也没什么意义喽。好，读到课文最后一句，他说 Keep these tips and facts in mind so that you won't get zapped next winter. 记住这些诀窍和事实。如此一来，下个冬天你就不会被电到喽。好，这边有两个文法重点。第一个是 keep something in mind， 也可以说 bear something in mind， 这表示记住、牢记，把什么什么放在心上。当它的受词比较长的时候，可以移到 mind 后面，变成 keep in mind 加上受词。好，另外我们也可以用 keep in mind 加上 that 子句来表达。例如 ，these tips are helpful。I'll keep them in mind. 这些诀窍很有帮助诶，我会谨记在心的。好，再造一个例句哦。Keep in mind that happiness is more important than money. 记住，快乐比金钱更重要。好，第二个文法重点是 so that. So that 是连接词，它表示以便怎么样，好让怎么样，意思就相当于 in order that. 好 ，so that 跟 in order that 后面是要接表示目的的副词子句，表达说如此一来怎么样，这样一来怎么样怎么样。例如 ，put on some sunscreen so that you don't get a sunburn， 擦一点防晒乳，这样一来你就不会被晒伤了。好，那再看一个例句哦。John made sure to lock his bicycle in order that it wouldn't be stolen. John 确认自己有把脚踏车上锁，这样子车子才不会被偷走
。好，那要提醒同学们，当 so that 跟 in order that 子句里面的主词和主要子句的主词一样的时候，其实可以改用 so as to 加原形动词，或是 in order to 加原形动词来表达。举例来说 ，He woke up early so that he could catch the first train. 好，因为主要子句的主词跟这个 so that 子句的主词都是 he 都一样，所以我们可以改成 He woke up early so as to catch the first train. 他早起以便能赶上第一班的火车。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Shield, Ray's sunglasses shielded his eyes from the bright light of the afternoon sun. Fabric. If you want to learn to make your own clothes, you can buy fabric in the market. Sole, shoes with black soles that are not designed for tennis may leave dark marks on the court. Humidity, the library keeps the humidity below 30 percent in order to protect the books. Lotion, Marissa puts on body lotion every night before going to bed. Knuckle, lost in thought. Joe tapped his knuckles against the table. 今天我们Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you, you next time. time.